You're done with your milk, Mia? You finish your breakfast? Countdown! Huh? Chevelle, count down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. It's on! Well, it's on. Good morning, everybody! It's already Friday today. It's just September 29th, 2017. Today is the feast day of the Archangels. The Archangels. Okay? It's a very nice feast day, the Archangels. Who are the Archangels? Who do we know? Saints Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, right? And Uriel, yeah, the, the fourth one, but we know very little about Uriel. Anyway, uh, today instead of reading the Gospel, eh, I will read instead one of the uh, one of the other readings okay, um, for the mass okay? we have a choice of first reading and I decided to uh, pick out the uh, one that comes from the book of revelations because it talks about uh, the angel Michael okay? the gospel for, for today is about the, the calling of Nathaniel see the calling of Nathaniel, well, our, where our Lord also says, well, you know, Nathaniel, you, you believe because I said I saw you under a fig tree. But you know what? You will see more than that. You will see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. See? So since it's the feast of the uh, archangels, I suppose uh, the church picked that gospel because it talks about the angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Right? But anyway, I decided to read a little bit uh, or a, a paragraph from the book of Revelation, which talks about the um, story of St. Michael, or at least one uh, story we know about St. Michael. So it goes, War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels battled against the dragon. The dragon and its angels fought back, but they did not prevail. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The huge dragon, the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, was thrown down to earth, and its angels were thrown down with it. Okay, so this is from the book of Revelation. It tells us the story of uh, what St. John, the apostle, uh, saw in a vision. Okay. And it is believed that uh, St. Michael was the one who showed St. John uh, these visions for the revelation. Okay, so today we honor the uh, archangels, particularly the archangels Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. Now, uh, it's interesting how these three archangels have a very important, or all, all of them serve very important roles uh, for people, for people. And um, the archangels are special messengers of God. Okay? They are special messengers of God. A few days from now, we're going to be talking about the angels in general. Today, uh, that feast is preceded by the feast of the archangels. Okay? There are, okay, just a little, uh, just a little, um, uh, review here there are different there are many well you call them nine uh, there are actually nine uh, levels or degrees of angels okay, that uh, that we know of okay, that has been revealed to us there are nine hierarchies yeah okay so uh, what are they uh, so um, these are the these are the levels the angels are the lowest levels the archangels are second to the angels the virtues the powers principalities dominions throne cherubims and seraphim those are the levels of the angels okay with god uh worshiping god and praising god uh, uh, in heaven now but two among these uh nine have been have been uh Commissioned by God to perform some special 
uh, functions for us men, okay? for us men on earth, okay? for, for humans. And today we will focus on the archangels. So the archangels, particularly the three, uh, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, have been sent by God in different times in uh, the history of the church okay? to perform some special missions for some particular people. Okay? For example, uh, um, the angel Michael. Okay? Michael appears already in, uh, the, in the book of Daniel. Okay? Uh, <coughs> apparently, uh, um, St. Michael has helped Daniel with his mission on earth. And then Michael also uh, appears there uh, in the Revelation as having uh, fought with the ancient serpent, right? the devil, Satan. Okay? So he is, he is known to be, uh, to be the protector, the protector of, uh, of people against uh, Satan, against evil. Okay? So he is the great protector. In fact, he is, he is pictured with, uh, with a sword. See, the one who battles against the devil. Right? <clears throat> That's Michael. And then we have Gabriel. Gabriel is... Um, oh, sorry. Wait a minute. I, mean, I, I, uh, I confuse these things. Gabriel was the one who was also sent to Daniel to help Daniel with his mission. Right. And he was also the one sent to... <clears throat> to who else? Huh? To Our Lady. To announce... To announce the... the birth of Jesus that she's going to be the mother of God right but and then to who else did Gabriel appear to before our lady huh before our lady who was born who became pregnant before our lady did Elizabeth Saint Elizabeth but no but Gabriel did not appear to Elizabeth he appeared to who <laughs> Zachariah, right? Okay. So he appeared to the husband of Elizabeth. Remember, he was doing a sacrifice, offering incense in the temple, and and when he and the angel Gabriel appeared to him, and he doubted the angel Gabriel's message, so he came out of there unable to speak. Okay, he was punished. Gabriel punished him. Said, "You don't believe me? Okay, <laughs> this is what will happen to you." So. Anyway, and and then you have the angel, the archangel, Raphael. Um, maybe this one is not very familiar to you. Because Raphael appears in the Old Testament. Okay? Uh, in the book of Tobit. Where he uh, accompanied, he pretended to be a friend. Okay? Uh, he took on human form and, and pretended to be the, a friend to the young Tobias. And uh, guided and helped Tobias in his journey. Uh, he was on an errand for his father Tobit, or the the Tobias, the, the older Tobias. See? And along that journey, he was also helped to uh, uh, to find a wife for for himself that he took home uh, with him. Okay? So these are the three archangels. The fourth one that's being mentioned, Uriel, uh, there's little that is uh, known about him. Uh, actually, I, I uh, couldn't find much of uh, any evidence around uh, about Uriel. Uh, I'll, I'll, dig in, I'll dig in a little bit more about that next time. Anyway, so these three archangels have been given very special missions by God. Okay? Now, what's the relevance to us? Okay? It's always, uh, it's always um, the, the, the bottom line is, what is the relevance to us? Why are the archangels important for us now? Okay? Are they still relevant to us now? Or they were only relevant to these people in the Old Testament and, uh, and they helped them and that was it? Well, Joe, excuse me? Were you saying something? Oh, I see. Okay, so... Uh, the archangels are still very much relevant for us today. Okay? And this is the way I'm going to put it. Okay? These three archangels 
uh, knowing what mission they were given by God to perform for men, we, who are living up to now, okay, so we don't have to just belong to the, to the past. For, the, for us now, they are still very relevant because up to today, we are living out the same kind of uh, um, um, vocations that these angels were sent to be protectors of and, and to be facilitators of. So, for example, Michael. Michael is the great uh, protector against Satan, against the devil. Well, what do we do every time? See, we have this habit. Every time we leave the house, right, we always pray the prayer to St. Michael. Right? St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God... Rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host. See? What text? For the power of God, cast into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits that prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Right? So we invoke St. Michael. Every time we leave the house, in order to protect us from all evil, from influences of sin, from the environment that may cause us uh, occasions of sin, and also to protect us bodily and physically as we go about doing our business of the day. Right? In the olden days, uh, the prayer to St. Michael used to be part of the Mass. The Mass uh, uh, used to end uh, with a prayer to St. Michael. See? And although it is not any more customary to do that uh, as part of the Mass, but because of devotion, we can do the same. You know, We can still do the same. And it's a prayer. St. Michael, uh, uh, the Archangel's Prayer, is something you can pray many times during the day, especially if you are under threat of temptation, especially if, uh, if uh, you are fearing something, you know? if you are afraid of something. See? Because some, many times fear is, is caused by, by the devil too. The devil puts in all sorts of crazy ideas in our heads to tempt us. See? So the prayer to St. Michael is a very, very nice prayer to, uh, to pray all throughout the day. Okay? And you know, you know who else I pray to every time uh, we receive communion and every time communion is being distributed by priests and by and by uh, Eucharistic ministers, you know, I pray to St. Michael. I ask St. Michael to protect Jesus from harm. I ask St. Michael to help the lay ministers and the priests to, uh, to distribute Jesus properly. See, uh, St. Michael is one of the ones I, I, I invoke and I ask help from. Every time communion begins, every time people start lining up for communion, I pray to St. Michael and to Our Lady too and to St. Joseph too and to my guardian angel too. But St. Michael is one of those that I call on to please help these ministers distribute Jesus properly. And you know what? You know when I started praying to him about the Eucharist? You know when? After, yeah, when all of those accidents started happening in church. And guess what? We haven't had much. In fact, I, I, I haven't witnessed any, right? Since the last time that I had uh, been writing about those accidents. So St. Michael, St. Michael is a good uh, one to invoke when it comes to needing protection. Now, what about St. Gabriel? What about St. Gabriel? St. Gabriel, you see, is very much connected to the vocation of parents, to the vocation of, um, of uh, married couples. Okay? Because he was the one who announced the birth of John the Baptist and the birth of Jesus. See, so uh, you, you uh, parents out there, Saint Gabriel is a very, very good um, intercessor to invoke and to ask help from. You know, to carry out your uh, parental duties, okay, and uh, and your uh, your espousal duties. At home in the domestic church, see Saint Gabriel 
is a good um, uh, um, is a good saint to uh, an, an archangel to invoke. You know, the name Gabriel means uh, strength of God. See, like God is my strength. So uh, let us ask Saint Gabriel, who is the strength of God, to strengthen us in our vocations, to strengthen us in our uh, parental uh, duties and parental obligations. See? Now, how what about the angel Raphael? The angel Raphael is the patron of the youth. See? Young people like you, see? Who, are, who are on the road to, uh, to uh, journey uh, in your young life. You're journeying through this life. And uh, there are plenty of uncertainties along your way. There's so many things that you are uh, not sure of. There's so many things you need clarification uh, about. Uh, and there's so many things, uh, so many doubts. Well, the angel Raphael was the one who guided the young Tobias see, throughout his journeys. And that is why Raphael is the patron of young people. See? And uh, if, if God is calling you to whatever vocation He's calling you to, particularly if it is a vocation to marriage also, then uh, St. Raphael is also the saint, the patron saint, the archangel, who can help you uh, and direct you towards um, uh, finding uh, that uh, potential friend and spouse that God might be preparing for you okay, to be your partner in life. So the Archangel Raphael. And you, you parents, if you want your children to be guided properly, well, you ask St. Raphael's help to guide your children uh, uh, th throughout their teenage life and throughout their uh, uh, early adulthood. And uh, maybe uh, St. Raphael will also find a, a proper partner for your uh, children along this journey of uh, their youth. Okay? So those are the three archangels that we celebrate today. We thank God for giving us these uh, protectors, these companions, and uh, these uh, supports that, uh, that can be with us all throughout our days and all throughout our life on earth. So it's a nice feast. It's a nice time to give thanks to God and give thanks to the three archangels as well for everything that they're doing for us. Okay. That's it for us, folks. Have a good day, everybody. Have a good weekend. Um, I'm not going to see you until Monday. So uh, have fun over the weekend, hopefully. Enjoy yourselves. And, uh, well, next week is October already. Ta -da! When is October 1st? Sunday. Sunday is October 1st. Oh, okay, guess what? October 2nd is the Feast of the Guardian Angels. So when we come back, we'll talk about angels again. But this time we'll talk about the Guardian Angels. Eh? The Guardian Angels on October 2nd. And you know what? By the way, October is also a very beautiful month in the church because it is the month of the Holy Rosary. It is the month of Our Lady. Uh, one of those periods, one of those... Uh, uh, seasons of the year where an entire month is dedicated to Our Lady. Particularly this time it's dedicated to the Rosary. See, that's how important the Rosary is in uh, Catholic life, in our Catholic practice. So uh, we can uh, perhaps make it a resolution to uh, pray our Rosaries better this uh, month of October. Uh, to pray more Rosaries this month of October. And maybe to make pilgrimages <laughs> to make pilgrimages to shrines of Our Lady this October, praying many, many rosaries. Because the rosary is our weapon. The rosary is, is, uh, is a, a very important prayer that Our Lady herself requested many times. And, uh, and Our Lady herself wanted us to pray, uh, especially for sinners and for uh, uh, healing the world with all the wounds and strifes of war and divisions that has uh, befallen the fate of men on earth. Okay, that's for October, folks. For now, enjoy your weekend. Bye.